Hello, welcome to Ambrose King Online Ministries where we we'll give your life a lift into the ministry of the Word of God. We're going to look at um, believing after prayers. Jesus taught us a very, very important principle on how to pray and how to receive answers to our prayers. But unfortunately, um, most people like to pray the Elijah and the Elisha type of prayer where, you know, uh, um, praying by fire or others would like to be repeating prayers and repeating prayer. One of the principles that Jesus mentioned was not to be like the heathen that prays repeating prayers because they think that by much repeti repetition God will hear them. Believers are to walk by faith. They just shall live by faith. So Jesus is one who brought faith. I think it's better for us to examine how Jesus taught us to pray so that we can receive answers to our prayers. I have made those mistakes in those days <clears throat> where I have to keep repeating prayers. And when I find out that the answers didn't come, I go back and repeat the prayer over and over again, shouting. And uh, that, those were days of ignorance. So I just want us to look at uh, what the Bible teaches about believing after prayers. I call it believing after prayer, prayers. It's very important for us to pray. We must pray. You have to pray, either privately or in a corporate environment. Prayer is a way that you communicate with a divine God, and that is His rule. But then again, prayer is not necessarily used to uh, ask God for, to do something for you. I think the best prayer is when you pray to God, to have a fellowship with God, to get to know yourself through fellowship with God. But let's look at what Jesus said about how to receive answers to our prayers. I think everybody would like to receive answers to their prayers. Uh, we are still working on knowing God, knowing Him by the Word, and believing what He said and acting on what He says. When you look at Mark 11, verse 24, Mark 11, verse 24, this is the words of Jesus. He said, Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. What a remarkable passage. It gives us the principles and the spiritual law that Jesus set in motion. This was, it was not like this back in the Old Testament days where they have to keep repeating prayers and chanting and repeating prayers. But when Jesus came, he changed the law. And this is the law that the believer is supposed to live by. He said, therefore, I say to you, who is the you? The believers, not everybody, those who are born again. He said, whatever things you desire. So God wants us to have desires. He said, whatever things you desire, as long as it lines up with the word. He said, when you pray, he didn't say if you pray. That means we have to pray for whatever we desire to manifest. He said, when you pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. The problem here is that a lot of people, including myself back in those days, they believe that you receive them has been a, a problem. And that's why you see people repeating prayers and repeating prayers over, over and over and over and over, using the same words over and over and over and over again. Because when you repeat prayer, you are violating the law of the Spirit laid by Jesus. It's like when you have to ask God over and over again, you are canceling the first prayer. And when you command a demon to leave twice and keep commanding him and keep commanding him or the demon, it will not take you seriously because you don't believe that you have authority in the name of Jesus. He said, whatever things ye desire, when ye pray, I hope you are praying, you have to pray for your desires. He said, believe that ye receive them. And the last statement says, and ye shall have them. So that means Jesus wants us to get answers to our prayers. So what are we to do? We have to do the word. So he said, when you pray, Believe. So Jesus introduced the principle of believing when you pray. When do you do the believing? You do the believing when you pray. Not just walk away after praying. And because you don't see the manifestation, you come back and pray the same prayer. Just like, uh, was it Elijah or Elisha, when he pray, pray for rain to rain, fall, keep sending his servant to go and check if the rain fell. But Jesus gave us a new rule here that when you pray, believe. The Greek word believe that Jesus introduced here 
the Greek word that was translated to English is pistuo. Pistuo means to trust in Jesus or God as able to aid either in obtaining or doing, in doing something. It's called saving faith. So when you believe, even though you have not seen the answer, you are telling God that, yes, he heard you. And because he heard you, he gives to you. Because the Bible tells us that if we pray according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, we have the petition what we have. So we are to do the believing. The believing is where you repeat yourself, not the prayer. Because say you, when you pray, believe, then you shall have them. It could be a, an hour, a week, a month, a year, whatever, depending on your believing after praying. So most people love to go back and repeat the prayers and keep repeating the prayers and keep repeating the prayer. And it's like chanting and chanting. And this, Jesus said this is um, what the heathen do. The heathen pray like that, and Jesus didn't want his believers, his followers to pray like that. So you pray once, make your petition according to this rule. Make your petition once. When you pray, you know, in the name of Jesus, God hears. But at the right time, God gives the answer. And what do you do between when you pray and when you get the answer? That's when we believe. We use belief to uphold prayers by making confession, by making affirmation. So when you make your prayer request, right in there, the next thing to do is say, I believe I receive my answers. I believe. I believe I receive my answers. Maybe the next day you don't have the answer yet. Instead of going back and repeating the prayer, just say, Father, yesterday I prayed. And your word says that we should believe when we pray. So I'm reminding you, I believe. I believe I have received my answer. Thank you, Jesus. So you give thanks to him. You know, it says without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith. It didn't say without prayers. It said without faith, it is impossible to please God. And what is faith? Faith is to believe what the word of God says. You accept it and you voice it out. So faith has a voice. So repeating prayers it leads to unbelief. And a lot of time, when you engage in repeating, 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 repeating prayers, then you be like the heathen. And when you be like the heathen, then you may fall into the hand of the occult. Sometimes you may even get manifestation because you repeat, repeat, repeat. But Jesus, it, 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 the answer may not come from God. So it's very important for us to follow what the Word of God says and um, adapt it to ourselves. So when you pray, believe. When you pray, believe. When do you believe? When you pray, not a week later, not a month later. When you pray, instantly when you conclude, you believe. How do you believe? You say to God, I believe I receive answers to my prayer. Thank you, Father. I believe I receive answers to my prayers. Glory to God. You know, when you look at Mark eleven twenty three, this is another principle that Jesus taught us on how to get what we want. Very remarkable. It says, Mark 11 and the 23rd verse, it says, For verily I say unto you, Remember again, it's talking to everybody, you the believer, that whatsoever ye sh what, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he say. I like that. So God wants us to speak to a mountain. Mountain could be problems, could be challenges, could be a need. You speak to it. So a lot of people talk to God about their problems, but they don't talk to the problem about their God. So Jesus has changed the principle. Instead of telling God your problem, talk to the problem. Tell the problem about your God. He said, talk whosoever shall say to this mountain. When you look at that, Mark eleven twenty three, 23. Whosoever, you are the whosoever. I am that whosoever. Say to the mountain, say to the problem, say to the challenges. Say to the obstacle. Be thou removed and be thou cast into this. And shall not doubt. The key word is, I shall not doubt. If you have any form of doubt, it won't work. And that's where it's very important for you to know how to operate by faith. Because... The only way you can have what you say, he say, I shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe, see, that word again, peace, Joe, that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. So God wants us to have whatever we say. So it's a learning curve for everybody. It's a learning curve to understand how to pray the principle of prayer to get answers. And, and once we do this, we begin to get results with God. Your fellowship with God will grow. You know, people like to do pity party when they're having problems, they're having challenges. They want people to feel sorry for them. They talk about the problem. And by so doing, the problem is magnified. But God wants us to 
no doubt when you speak to the mountain and believe that those things shall come to pass. Again, believe is two parts. Believe is to accept what the word of God says and you voice it out. So when you speak to your problem, you believe that it's gone. So you say, Father, thank you. I believe that problem is gone. Even though you probably will be looking at you, but you have to keep saying you believe that you have spoken to that problem, that problem will go. And that's why Jesus said that you shall have whatever you say. Say means you have to speak. You have to speak more to that problem. It's better for you to speak, speak to the problem than for you to tell other people or complain about your problem. So there's no need to complain. Speak to the mountain, speak to the problem, and thank God for the answer. Glory to God. So, for instance, you can say to the mountain, say to the problem, say, say to the symptom, say, in the name of Jesus, I command you to go. The symptom might still be there, be looking at you, might even be getting works. What you do, uphold it, what you have said, by believing. And say, Father, thank you, it is gone. It is gone in the name of Jesus. You see, you are upholding it by believing. So when you see your enemies, instead of telling your enemies to die by fire, and for them to somersault and burn by fire, tumble, just speak to your enemy. Speak to them in the name of Jesus. This demon, leave my body. This demon, leave whatever it is. Speak to those enemies to live in the name of Jesus and uphold with faith. Give thanks to God for the answer. So that is what Jesus taught us in the New Testament. And that's what every believer is supposed to be practicing. And as you do that, we begin to experience better results with our prayers and better results with the words that we say. And that's why it's very important for you to say positive things. Always say good things about yourself, about your situation. You speak to that problem. You see, when you keep telling people about your problem, you are magnifying it. You are making it bigger. When you keep talking about your enemies, about devil, about demons, you are making their influence over your life bigger. But what you need to do as a believer, that's why you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Once you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you now operate in what 1 John chapter 4, verse 4 says. It says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Because the Holy Spirit that is greater than anything that will come against you is inside of you. And that's why Apostle John also says, say, Whatsoever is born of God overcomes this world. And I said, this is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. So it's our faith that overcomes. It's our faith that produces results. It's our faith that helps us to get what to pray for. I trust that this short fellowship has been a blessing to you. I just want you to do me a favor, put your comments. Go ahead and like. And uh, of course, share, share, share. And uh, my prayer is that, uh, you know, you will walk by faith and not by sight, by not repeating prayers, by not chanting and chanting and chanting and chanting. It is not the amount of repetition that make God answer. It is faith that moves God. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. Who are the just? The justified ones. We are the justified. Once you are born again, you are justified because Jesus Christ justified you. So it's a law now, not the way the Old Testament prophet, the Old Testament folks, not even the way Moses prayed. Because we are the new creation. After Jesus died and rose up from the dead, he brought forth the new creation. If you're watching me today, you are not yet saved. It is too dangerous. Where will you end? Are you going to go to heaven or are you going to go to hell? Without Jesus in your life, you will go to hell. And to believe is very simple. What you need to do is trust that Jesus, what Jesus did on the cross. He died, he was crucified. He shed his blood. The Bible says he shed his blood for the whole world. So he took your sins. Our sins were laid on Jesus. And he died, was re- he was buried, he raised himself from the dead. He's in heaven now. All you need to do is put your faith. See, faith again, you have to believe, believe. So you have to accept that what the Bible says is true. You find that in First uh, Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. And the Bible tells us that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. That's Romans chapter 10 and verse 9. So God has made it so simple to believe on Jesus, to be saved. Just wherever you are, just Tell him how, that you are sorry, that you are a sinner, and that you have come to him, and you believe that, you believe what the Bible says, that Jesus died on that cross for you, for your sins, past, present, and future sins, and now that you confess him as the Lord of your life. And when you do that, with a believing and repentant heart, the Holy Spirit will come and seal eternity in, in you. The Holy Spirit will come and live in you. And from that day until rapture, or when you leave this earth, your salvation is secured. That's what the Bible says. So I invite you, if you don't know Jesus, come to God today, get saved, get filled with the Holy Spirit, and begin to allow the Word of God to dominate your thinking, and you act on the Word of God to get results. 
I trust that this video has encouraged you. Again, if you want to put your comment, go ahead and put your comment. And don't forget to click the like and share, share, share. God bless you. I'll see you all again in another video. Bye-bye.